I'm shifting to you with the social. What is, you explain what going dark is, like those platforms, the email, the text, the direct mail, which is just crazy, the direct mail. Um, but what is your plan to implement it? And I would love, yeah, especially if you can walk through some of those examples of you showing it earlier so people can kind of All get right. an idea of what that looks like practically. All right. I mean? I'll walk through it <laughs> one more time. <laughs> playing with you. Okay. So first of all, like, again, you just want to use, it's all leverage, right? So it's like, you want to okay. use the weight of these big giants, to their advantage. So you can use public platforms to build your private, your private platform. Um, mm -hmm. So one of the things I've been testing, so, so, so Superphone, if you guys don't know, I'm not getting paid for this, but Superphone.io is where you can go. There's, there's more than uh, one texting platform. There's one called community now, um, which I haven't tried, but there are some things I'm unsure of about it that I don't necessarily like as much as Superphone. Um, but can you touch on that really quickly? Yeah. Yeah. Um, one, I'm a Ryan Leslie stand, but that's beside the point. Uh, two, um, <laughs> community, like one thing that I've noticed is that um, they are focusing really heavily on big influencers, grabbing big influencers to promote the brand. And I think that, um, it's watering down the message because everyone knows that Diddy's not really texting with you. Yeah. And Superphone is designed, its position is one is a, one of like a one-on-one -on -one connection. And the way they position it is this is my actual phone. So I think mm -hmm. it's more helpful to people who aren't mega celebrities. Two, there's a tech issue, which I realized, which Superphone, when you get into the systems and you start sending out messages, you realize that they make you put a personalized F name tag in all the messages, meaning you have to have like, Hey, Sean, this is Daniel. Here's today's message or whatever. You have to put a tag in there. And I asked them why they did that. Cause there are sometimes when I want to send messages where I don't want to have the first name in there. Um, and they said that one thing they found was that um, if you take out the first name and you only have the text and it's not personalized, that means that when you send out a blast, every text is the same. And a lot of carriers block that as spam. Um, because, you know, if you have 10,000 phone numbers, and you send out 10,000 of the same, hey, what's up, concert tonight, blah, blah, blah. A lot of text carriers see that as 10,000 of the same message, and they're gonna block that because that's spam. And I just, that was just one example of, I've seen a lot of the, the thought that Superphone's put into some of their features and like how they do things. I'm like, you guys aren't just making a product to make a product, you actually put a lot of thought into the user experience around this, and I appreciate that, you know? Gotcha. And they're, they're, they're a solid team. Um, but in terms of like, examples. So the first thing is, and I'm, I'm testing all this stuff. So I'll, I'll, I'm, I'm in the testing phases, so I, you know, take what you want and see how it works for you. The first thing I'm doing, and I'll share my screen with you here, um, is I'm running ads to my phone number, which is like kind of, again, it's a little bit like antithetical because you're like, wait a minute, you're using the platform that you're bashing to get people to the private platform. Again, <laughs> I'm not bashing it. I just want to know how I can utilize it to my best advantage. So here's an example of an ad. I'm screen sharing on this. This is an ad that I'm running. Uh, I'm tired of social. Let's have a real conversation. Text me on myself as advice. Zad advice is my little, is my little slogan. Like it's like I'm zaddy and then it's advice and it's advice. And, uh, <laughs> and there's my number, you know, and there's a, it's subtle branding cause it's like my little hashtag there. And then I'm wearing my shirt. And it's kind of distorted, so it's a little bit of attention grabbing. It makes me look very light, though. I'm a little bit darker than that in real life. And then, uh, <laughs> and then there's my number. And so I'm testing this now, and I'm running this only to my warm audience of people who are on my email list and people who are on who are engaging with my social platform. So it's just it's a kind of a closed circle because what I'm doing here is I'm not trying to bring awareness of me. I'm just trying to convert existing fans who are already in my orbit. Because I figure, like, if you don't know me, why would you text me? So you don't need to know. You, you, this doesn't need to go any wider because it might just see an audience. So this is one thing that I'm using, which, uh, you know, I'll see the results in this. We'll, we'll see as it goes, like what the results are in this. Um, another thing I'm doing is, uh, is I, like I, it's in my bedroom now, but I have hoodies and, and sweatshirts that are printed out just for my own personal use. Well, when I do talks now, it's just a giant phone number, you know, and it's like text for his advice. It's just my giant phone number. So now when I get on video of me doing talks or I'm in public for talks, it's just very, clear. I know it's a little corny, you know, but like, I don't care. Um, hey, like it works. Does it yeah, work? <laughs> like, like, even, like even a few years ago, the baby was going around in a diaper. So 
True. What do I care? You know, <laughs> you know, so I'm going around with my phone number. Um, and obviously I'm putting my phone number on every single piece of content. I actually might even change the main headline of my website to just be my phone number. So I'm just like being as obvious and almost obnoxious as I can with that, just because people who already like me will do it. People who don't care, don't care. So it doesn't matter. Um, so that, and then if you want, I can walk you through how I use this in a real use case. Yeah, do it. Do okay. It. I think it's going to be super useful. Super useful. So imagine you are, you know, I mean, you can be an artist or you can be, um, you can be a consultant or a coach or an entrepreneur who's doing service-based stuff. I mean, this is widely applicable. Like you can, you can think about this and don't think about my specific use case, think about how you could use it. But, um, I have a, I have a, an existing text message list. So just some background on how I got that. Um, I've been, I've been in this game for, you know, many years now. And I was like smart and or fortunate enough to like have enough foresight to say, maybe this data will be useful one day. So I've been collecting phone numbers for mm. years, even though, so like I, I already had the seeds of a Sith Lord. I was going dark early. You know? <laughs> I knew that I was going to need this info, but I'd never really used it. You know, so I've been collecting phone numbers since 2000, honestly, 2014. Um, so that'll give you some context to how long this takes. Um, and I've been collecting them because I was doing, when I was doing webinars every week, I would use text messages for reminders, um, just like one-off reminders. I, um, for a while I had, there was another service called call loop, which I don't use anymore and I wouldn't recommend, but I was using them for text messaging. This was like maybe five years ago. So like I knew there was potential there, but I didn't, I wasn't fully on board, but I do have the numbers deep in my database. And like, again, it just shows you how useful data is. Like it's all about the data, you know, yep. a quick little aside here, uh, when, when Dollar Shave Club sold to Gillette for a billion dollars, they weren't selling the razors, they were selling the customer list, okay? Because mm -hmm. Gillette did the math and they said, it will cost us more than a billion to get all these customers who are on subscription, <laughs> recurring revenue, we might as well pay you guys a bill and we'll just take the customer list. They're paying for data, you know? Everything is data. When you sell a company, mm -hmm. you're selling the data of that company, especially if it's a recurring business. So anyway, data is very useful. So I had this data um, from years of like writing blog posts online and doing social media content and running ads. So that's when I say I spent a lot of time and money to collect this stuff. And you will too, because this is a long-term play for you artist out there, you entrepreneur, whatever. This is a long-term play. So I have about 12,000 phone numbers, 11 and a half thousand. Mm -hmm. And um, I, you know, I brought them back from the dead recently. In fact, I only started texting these people the week of Christmas, you know, just to see if it would work. I'm just like, let me import this okay. stuff and see if it works. And I sent out my first like happy holidays text. And people, a lot of people were like, yo, fuck you, like unsubscribe, you know, get me off of this really? thing. A lot, well, I mean, you know, from a list of 12,000, you know, even if it's like 200 people, that's a small percentage, but it's a lot of fuck yous. Um, <laughs> you know. But check this out. On a list of 12,000, I only got one dick pic, which I thought was amazing, you know, in terms of ratio ratio like you think it would be more right I mean, one big, <laughs> sick sick people so but but then what i learned was some of these people but here's my assumption my guess was that this data was okay people don't change their phone numbers nearly as often as they change their other things um i still have my phone number from when i was in high school so i knew a lot of these numbers would still be good and um and although i did get some people who were like fuck you take me off this list I got a ton of people who are like, oh my God, Daniel, I can't believe you're texting me. This is amazing. Wow, I've been following your work for how many years? Because da, 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 da. my yeah. assumption was, if you've been following my social and my email list and you still like my stuff, if you got a text from me, you wouldn't mind it. Like, that would be okay. You know, yeah. if I got a text from my favorite author, who's a New York Times bestselling author who you watch and been following him and all this bullshit, you'd be like, that's pretty cool. And then if he actually yeah. texts you back, your mind would be blown. You know? Yeah. So I did it and it worked. And so, like, okay this is going to work. So the next, like, you know, in a week and a half later, like once the holidays hit, no, no, this was like, this was, this was like, this was like December, like the last week of December, I just said, I'm going to test this out. And I sent out a text to 11,000 people. I'm like, Hey, I'm, I'm thinking of doing a live meetup in LA um, on, you know, on January 4th, which is just last weekend as of this recording. So I gave them less than a week to decide. And usually people like when I, I've done a lot of live events and usually people need like some, some lead time just to like get their schedules. And I just want to see what would happen. Mm -hmm. So I sent out this, this text and from the 11,000 people, I got a hundred people to say, yes, I'm interested in learning more about that. 
Now, the conversion rate on that isn't like super high, but at the same time, it's the first time I've ever done this. They're still learning that I'm texting them. Like there's some warming up to do. Right. I was a hundred people is still a lot. And I know this because like I have a, a 44,000 person email list and it would be harder to get 11 or it would be harder to get a hundred responses of a yes from the email list probably than it would be from the text. Just because I know open rates, I know like just, or even on social media, like I have over 200,000 just on Instagram and I could do that shout on Instagram and I wouldn't get a hundred responses that say yes, probably just because of exactly. You just don't, it just doesn't work as much as you think it does. I can put it up on a story and I can have a thousand people see that and I'm not going to get a hundred responses. So like to get that from my text message list, I was like, it's pretty solid. And, and a lot of people probably didn't respond just because they weren't in LA. So why would they respond to that? I was going to ask you, did you target based on location at all? Well, the thing is, because this is old data, like when you, when you get people in Super Bowl for the first time, it makes them put their location down. But if you, if I'm just importing data, all I have is their name, their phone number, and their email address. So I don't have all that data, and I'm still enriching the data. You know, I'm still enriching it. So I don't even have great targeting right now. I'm still getting there. But so this but is a, a be clear. What does enriching the data mean? Oh uh, well, you're a tech guy. Um, you know, it's like enriching the data is like um, adding additional information, adding additional fields of info to the data you already have, um, and getting more complete data. You know, so if you only have an email, a phone number, and a name, I want to get your location, your birth date, and your sex, and all that stuff, so that I can geotag you. Um, and and so what's been happening is when people text me back, and I realize that I don't have all their information, I'll say I have a little hot key on Superphone that says, "Hey, I got your uh, info from my old email list. Thanks so much. You know, would you mind filling this out so I can keep in touch, so I have your complete info?" And then they fill that out, and I get their enriched data where I get like their location. And then that way, when I come to their city, I can say how many people are in New York and I can do my New York tag. Um, but I didn't have this when I was making that meeting. And that's going to take me all year to get that info. Like I'm not just, it's going to take me all year to get that info. And I'm committed to that. But so I got a hundred responses, you know, give or take. And, uh, and then of that, I said, I emailed, I texted them back and I said, great, here are the, here's the info. And I sent them a little form and it was $50. Um, and I got, it was $50 for the meetup. It was in less than a week. And I got 30 people to sign up. And I actually honestly missed some people who were interested. So I probably could add more if I would, it's just, it was a lot to filter through. But I got 30 people to sign up. It was 50 bucks. So it was 1500 bucks on the front end. Not bad. That's I from mean, text message. From text message, you know, not bad on the front end. But keep in mind, I have bigger channels than this. On the top end, I have social media, which is like well over, I don't know, three or 400K combined. And then I have an email list, which is like tens of thousands of people. This is my smallest channel with one text message. So think about the levels of magnitude there. So, yeah. you know, purchases on the front end, uh, 1500, 1500 bucks. Um, so there's a small amount of profit there because I pay for the space. So anyway, I get 30 people into the room. This was last weekend. You can go on my YouTube channel. You can see the recap of this event. And um, basically what I did was I did a three hour meet and greet seminar and a q a it should have been five hours it should have been longer honestly um but it was three hours and uh then what i did was i sent out a feedback survey i'm going to show you guys this feedback survey because it's so just slick daddy i mean if you're a marketer you know it's just <laughs> slick daddy and I, I was trying to tell my wife about this she's like i just don't care um i mean she cares but you know it's like not as exciting for her it's, just, it's a different kind of care <laughs> it's a different kind of care you know so here's the uh here's the type form Cause I was thinking like, whenever you have a funnel, you want to be able to follow up with people uh, mm -hmm. or wh whatever you have, whenever you're making a sale on the front end, I've learned this from a lot of events. You want to be able to have something to offer on the back end Cause I mean, it's just how business is. It's just how it should run. Mm -hmm. Like you should have an offer. Otherwise it's like you're just wasting all that attention in the room. Like you just, you know, it's like they're in there in person. If they're there, they're close fans who like you. Why wouldn't you have something for them? You know? So what I did was um, I sent in this feedback survey. The feedback survey is very non-invasive because it does two things. One, it gets their feedback, which they want to give their feedback and it gives them a chance to give me ideas for making the next events better. Um, and two, it allows me to slip in a sale without sending them to a sales page because people are automatically like sales pages. I mean, they're fine, they work, but if, if they know they're going to a sales page, they categorize it as this is a sales page I'm looking at and there's a bit of a barrier there. So what I did was, as you're seeing on the screen, I have a survey. Um, it says, hey, thanks so much for attending. Uh, it was an honor to meet you. 
you know, it takes a moment for the feedback. So I go through their full name and their information. By the way, I already have all this info. The reason I asked for it again is just because, you know, from, from doing this for many years, I know sometimes you don't have complete information and you want to be able to, like, let's say I need to export this list. I, I just want to have all the info. I don't want to have to go yep. cross-reference my database or be like, yeah, you know, I just, I've just done it too many times. I'm just like, give me your info again. You know, um, I just, you know, I'm tired, man. Okay. Yeah. Cause now you can say, I want to, well, what if I would just want to do something specifically with the people who gave me feedback right. and right. you know, these are these people. I have all the info, but do I want to go through super phone and convert kit again? No, I don't. Nope. Um, yeah. So how would you rate the overall experience on a scale of one to 10? By the way, I'm starting off with low investment questions just to get them to start answering the survey. That's some psychology there. They're easy to answer. Um, you know, what would you, uh, how much would you, how likely would you be to come back to another event? Low investment. Um, now this is kind of like, I mean, it's a medium investment. What was your number one takeaway inside or breakthrough moment from the event? Um, how can we improve the event next time? Uh, what questions do you still have that you did not get to ask them at the event? So these are at, allowing me to like tweak the events that I do in the future to just make them better, um, tweak the messaging. And then here's the cool thing. So I'm considering doing some mini coaching packages with 10 people from the event. So what does that first of all say? Considering, meaning it's not really a sale. I'm just thinking about doing this. Are you interested? Two, 10, there's a little bit of scarcity around that. So it's like, oh, there's only 10. And then I thought about like having a whole sales phase and shit. And I have all the copy I can give, but I don't, I just didn't want to do a sales page. I'm just like, I don't want to do it, you know? So I just put this the offer here. You're going to get an hour of my time to go deep on your challenges and we'll develop a strategic plan for your business. I'll also give you access to my entire profit paradigm business curriculum, which is just my, the, the digital component of my coaching program. Um, and I'll check up on you to make sure you stay on track. By the way, that checkup is going to be an automated checkup from Superphone, which they can hit me back on. So investment is 350. Would you like one of the 10 spots? Um, and so they can click no. And they'll just be taken to a page that says, you know, they'll submit it and they'll say, thanks, have a nice day. Thank you for your feedback. But if they click yes, it takes them right here to a payment page. They put in their info. Um, then it's hip hooked up with Zapier. Zapier hooks it up to, um, to Gmail. Gmail shoots them out a, a message that says, thanks, here's where you can book. That's hooked up to my Calendly. And they schedule on the call. So what happens is all I do is send them out a feedback survey. They go through this thing. I get feedback and sales with no additional effort. And I, I opened up my phone the next day and I already saw bookings on my calendar and money on my Stripe. I was like, excellent. This is great. <laughs> you know, and all this was, and I didn't make any public offers. This is all internal. So the only people who bought are the people who chose to go down that, that lane with me, you know, and, and that was if I wanted, how many text messages at this point? Uh, I mean, you know, to my whole list, it was, I did one text message to my whole list. One to your whole list. One to my All whole right. list. I did, um, and then I did one follow up to the hundred. Oh no, I did two follow ups to the hundred. Okay. Okay. And then one follow up with the survey. So four text messages. Four text messages. Um, and this generated... We got from the first send of this, we got five bookings, which five times 350 is, you know, like uh, 1750, I think, something like that. Um, so that's on top of the 1500 we already made. So that's three plus grand. And then I'll, I'll, I'll send this out again because it's all I'm doing is saying, can I get your feedback, which is much less aggressive than saying, can I get you to buy? Mm -hmm. So I'll send this out again and say, hey, I didn't get your feedback. You gotta, but really what I'm doing is I make sure they see the offer. Um, and so my goal with these is to low key, like I can get just 30 people to the event each time, which I know will get better and better as I do more of these. But if I can get just 30 people and make five grand off each event, I'll do two of those a month. And I'll make an extra 10 grand. That's an extra 120 K a year from just like, from like, no, there's like no, no imprint of that. Like no one sees it on social. I'm not emailing it out. It's just a couple text messages and it adds extra 120 K to my bottom line. And all I'm doing is like simple automations and a little bit of texting. Love it. Love it. Like you know? I said, no imprint on social, you know, it's, it's hard to imagine, but that's how things used to go down anyway. Right. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, exactly. That's, that's how, and, and that just goes to show you now, now I could go on social and I could try to, you know, fill these spots with, you know, and I've done that for years. I've done that and I could do, I could do it that way. Um, but it just, it doesn't work as well for me because I like to be targeted now.
What was the open rate when you sent it to that list? And that's what this dark social allows. Uh, the open rate on what? So you sent that one text, right? What was the open rate on that one message? That first well, message to the to everybody? It's hard to say because they don't have statistics on open rates, but I mean, presumably, you know, text message open rates are very high. You know, if okay. it's a good list, it's going to be as high as 98%. Who knows? You know, but I can tell you, I can tell you on other things, like, um, I, I, well, I guess if it's a sign up, I can tell you that I've had, um, like, I'll have as high as, like, uh, on a whole list send, a 5% click through rate, which doesn't sound like a lot, but like if I send a text message out to 11,000 people and I get 700 to 900 clicks, that's a lot. Like exactly. I, it might not sound like a lot, but it's a lot because I know mm-hmm. email stats and they're not like that. Yep. You know, um, I mean, if you know the influencer game, if you talk about Instagram stories, oh, people are so, you know, hyped up about swipe ups. Bro, I've been on that game. The, the swipe up click through rate is low, dude. It's so low, you know, because people are just, it's being fed to them and they don't, they don't, they're not programmed That's to it. do that. But click, click through rates on text are really, really good. On my targeted stuff, where I was only sending out to 100 people, I would get like 90% click through rate. And again, it's all about targeting. So it's like, can you get fine enough where only the right people get the right message? And if you can figure that out, that's, for me, that's going to be an extra. I mean, if I can tweak this, this would be an extra 120 to a quarter million dollars a year just for me, like doing these little 30 person events around the country. <laughs> you know, like. Love it. Why couldn't you do this with music? You why can. couldn't you offer them a, a VIP package? Why couldn't you offer them a meet and greet? Why couldn't you offer them, you know, um, shit? I mean, some people would do collabs. Like, I mean, there's so much stuff you could, this funnel could be endless. There's so many different directions. And there's. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.